Hey, shalom everyone. You're watching the Ponderings of the Pure Kea Vote. I'm Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and today we are in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 of the Pure Kea Vote, which reads, Rabban Yochanan, the son of Zakai, received the tradition from Hillel and Shemai. He would say, if you have learned much Torah, do not take credit for yourself. It is for this that you have been formed. Our obedience to God does not deserve any special allocades. It is what we were created to do. And Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai said, If you have learned much Torah, do not claim credit for yourself, because for such a purpose you were created. Let me tell you about an interesting uh, tradition or an interesting legend uh, that has been circulating in rabbinic Judaism, which I think kind of ties in to uh, this uh, passage of the, of, of, of the Pirkei Avot. Uh, there's a tradition that states that when you were conceived, there was an angel from heaven that was assigned to you in the womb and spent those nine months teaching you Torah. And so right before you were born and you were about ready to, to enter this world, the angel put his finger under your nose, right on your lips, and created that little indentation that's there that helps form our lips. And he went, shh. And we come out screaming because we, we come out screaming for the reason that we have totally forgotten every single thing that we have been taught over the nine months regarding Torah by that angel. And so we're, we're distraught, we're distressed because, you know, partially it seems like those nine months was totally in vain because why teach us Torah for nine months only to forget it as soon as we're born? Well, that creates the purpose of life. Because we are to rediscover and we are to relearn everything that we were taught within those nine months within our lifetime. So I think that's kind of an interesting legend. And, you know, this, this may bring about the question, uh, what is the meaning of life? Uh, you know, what's the purpose of life? Well, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 has the answer. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, keep his Torah, for this is the whole duty of man. And I'd like to read to you James chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. It says, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Oh, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give him those, give him not those things which are needful for the body. What does it profit? Even so, if it hath not works, it's dead. Being alone, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. See, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's only going to come about by actions, by acting on it. We may have nice sentiments and nice thoughts. Oh, I, I really feel bad for that person. They just lost a loved one. Or, oh, I really feel bad for this person. They just lost their job. Well, so what? Who cares? Those feelings don't mean a darn thing unless you act upon them. You go and comfort that person in their time of mourning. You buy groceries or, or you know, send a gift card or, or, or anonymously give them money so that they can be helped through this time of unemployment. You know, so uh, 1 Corinthians 8.1 says, Knowledge puffeth up, but charity or love edifieth. So, you know, just because you know something doesn't mean anything. You've got to act on it for it to truly mean something. So much toward knowledge without living it out, applying it to your daily life will make you prideful. So to keep you humble, you not only got to study Torah, but you got to live the Torah. You got to practice what you preach. You got to practice what you've learned. So you may know the cure for a deadly disease, but if you don't transfer that, that knowledge of that cure into, from the realm of thought into the realm of action, into this outside world, to this outside reality. It's worthless. It doesn't mean anything. And that's exactly what Rob Shul, the Apostle Paul, says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1-8. through 8. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I've become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. I'm just making a bunch of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, in other words, though I know Torah like the back of my hand, I can recite it, I can, you know, I can teach it, um, you know, and, and I believe it all. So that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to, pe to feed the poor, oh, I can do the outward actions of, of works. 
I can do the outward actions of, you know, of, of obeying Torah and of doing what the Torah says. But if it doesn't come out of, of a place of love, it's nothing. He says, if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, I'm willing to die to die for somebody. I'm willing to be a martyr and have not love. It profits me nothing. Love suffers long. It's long suffering. It's kind. Love in, envies not. It's not jealous. It, it, it doesn't vaunt itself or puffeth, puffeth itself up. It's not prideful. It doesn't behave unseemingly. It seeks not her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. It rejoices not in, in iniquity. And that word iniquity is just another word for lawlessness or Torahlessness. But rejoices in the truth, which is the Torah, which is Yeshua the Messiah. Uh, so love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much you know. It doesn't matter how much you've learned. It doesn't matter if you have rabbi in front of your name or PhD at the end of your name. It doesn't matter. If you don't have love and if you don't act uh, these things out and walk the Torah out in love in the footsteps of Yeshua our Messiah by walking and following in the Torah, it doesn't mean a darn thing. It's just totally useless. It's just a bunch of empty actions, empty words, and a bunch of hot air. Uh, so thanks so much, guys, for watching. Shalom, Shavuot Tov. Have a great day. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to our social media accounts on Instagram at AD underscore international, on Facebook at Abraham's Descendants International, on Twitter at ADINT Ministries, and on Blogger at Ray Bash's Ramblings. And don't forget to check out and bookmark our website, Abraham's Descendants.com. Shalom.